Hey everybody, Derek Brown here at the NAM 2020 show. I'm here with Sax Spy, and I'm gonna show you an in-depth look into my saxophone that I've added quite a few modifications to. Um, and we'll start, let's see, we'll start at the top and go down. So I kind of have this approach of, I mean, go big or go home. I'm not afraid to kind of tweak things just to, to make it work for me. Everything from, you know, just, just making this front F key work for me, you know, I bent that over a little bit just so I can, can use that. Tiny things like shaving off parts of keys. I like to hold the sax like this and do some percussive stuff, which I'll talk about. Um, so making room. It's not unusual to see me uh, in my practice room with like a, a filer working on the sax, uh, but whatever. I'm a trained professional. Actually, I'm not, but um, okay. Some of the, the more uh, noticeable things. First of all, people will also co often comment on my thumb, ho thumb hook here, which is noticeably smaller than a normal P. Moriat. And this is a P. Moriat 76, System 76, by the way, um, where it would normally be out here. And I, uh, you know, when I'm playing, I'm often hitting this hook here. But I realized, oh, I can actually get, you know, like 16th notes if I go up and down with the ring. And so I've, over the years, I've kind of shaved this down, filed it down even shorter. So it's almost not even there. And that's so I can kind of go up and down. I also do these kind of flam sounds. That's what I'm doing, like. Nice acoustics in here, yeah. All right, so there's that. You'll notice even things like I removed this guard here just to make room for my, my thumb there. Um, then I realized, oh, this is cool. I can use rings to, uh, to make noise on the saxophone, kind of like a guitar player, you know, fingerstyle guitar hitting, hitting their uh, guitar. And so once that happened, I kind of realized, oh man, I'm crossing over the dark side. What other things can I hit on this instrument? And so I realized, oh, you know, what if I, I could do some scratching stuff on the bell? And after kind of banging around a little bit, you know, I, it's probably not the best thing for the bell. So I had a, a tech guy. Um, in Chicago, add on this little brace here so I can kind of scrape away without worrying that it's going to damage the bell. So there's this brace here. Also, I added two of these guards on the bottom, and that's because if you see me in a live show, I'm often, I'm probably not going to do it on the cement here, but I like to kind of bang it around, you know, kind of stomp it on the ground. Uh, and that, of course, adds a little extra protection on the bottom, so I'm not denting that. People often ask about this. Kind of looks like some people, you know, when they put tape between their glasses to hold it on. This is not holding the saxophone together. This is just uh, me adding plastic for a different sound co compared to hitting the metal there. I'll do grooves like that. Um, often I'll, in my shows, I'll get audiences to sing things, kind of a la Bobby McFerrin style. And I'll kind of do a, like a percussion groove on the, on the sax. Uh, so that's another thing. This is another noticeable thing here, uh, this little ridge. This is me going for a kind of a guiro sound. So something like. So yeah, just, you know, sky's the limit. What else can I do on this saxophone? <laughs> oh yeah. So, you know, a lot of newer horns have the uh, altissimo F sharp key. A lot of players, I know a lot of jazz players don't really like these keys just because they don't use it. I, it's true, I don't use my Altissimo F sharp. I use the more the front F fingering, but um, I do. I, there's a kind of a fingering thing I do where I play a C and then this F sharp key, and you can kind of get the almost like that Leo P kind of. Um, I call it a uh, what do I call it. What do I call that thing? Glis overtone glissando, yeah. And so you can get this like. And the reason I bent that up like that is because it's kind of like a palm key. You know, usually when that's down, you ha on all of these saxophones, you have to lift up your finger and you have to move it off that key and press down. So you can't slur between the two. This way, with it bent up, or if you have some kind of a riser on that, you can actually just 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 bend your finger like that. And so once again. Instead of lifting it up. So a really simple thing that I think should be on every saxophone. It just makes a lot of sense. Um, the reason why 
you corked that and took the Perla? That right now is just because uh, I don't really use this alternate F sharp very much. And when I removed the, uh, the guard there, you know, if you're sitting down and playing, it can accidentally open up. And so I just, I just thought I'd just leave it where it just won't open up. Um, and then another thing, you've seen this probably on some berries, like the P. Moriot berries have these triple uh, hook rings. Uh, the reason I like it on the tenor is, so this is where the normal height would be of a hook. And since I'm not really using this thumb hook here, because I'm, I'm actually kind of, you know, pushing down on it, if anything, the natural state of rest is, oh, you know, is pushing it into my mouth. And so I'm finding that, you know, my left thumb's getting sore pushing this out, holding it out. And so adding this third on there, if when I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of ring stuff, if I put it on the bottom, it kind of changes the center of gravity. And there, it just kind of naturally fits that instead of pushing it, does that make sense? Um, that's one. Oh, and one other thing, this little guy here, um, I was inspired by, I guess, the uh, like vibra slap percussion getting a little rings. I put some screws in there, a little weight on the end, so I can just get a whatever. <laughs> if I'm inspired to do actual percussion on the sax. And that, that's the Derek Brown beatbox sax, ladies and gentlemen. It looks, so once again, System 76 P. Moriot. Looks like it's ancient, right? Looks like one of these vintage horns. People think, oh, is that a Mark VI? Actually, it's only four years old. I'm just really rough on it. And yes, it does come normally with kind of this dark lacquer, but you can see, like as I said, I've crossed over the dark side. I also play with a lot of saliva, uh, so there's, it's just uh, kind of constantly rusting, but I think it, I think it looks cool. <laughs> hey everybody, thanks for listening. Thanks for putting out with my losing voice. They call that Nam Thrax here at the Nam Show. But yeah, be sure to follow Sax by Awesome Channel, cool things about the saxophone on Instagram uh, or Beatbox Sax on Instagram, my YouTube channel, Beatbox Sax. Thanks for watching.